They had a place where they'd store it, right under our noses. And they just thought they could get away with it forever. And they could have if it hadn't been for those trackers. <laughs> right now, you're watching this on an electronic device. Do you ever think about where it'll end up when you're done with it? Many devices contain toxic materials and should be recycled very carefully. Sadly, lots end up in landfills. But even if you're diligent and give your electronic waste, or e-waste, to a recycler, that's no guarantee about what happens next. American recyclers often ship it overseas, frequently to countries in Southern Asia. There, workers take apart toxic material by hand, often without proper safety measures. And U.S. policy lets it happen. But thanks to one small nonprofit, not everyone gets away with it. That means they're really worried about our program, probably. So we usually want to put our tracker somewhere where it will be nice to fit in. So for example, right here is a good spot. We're at the office of the Basel Action Network, or BAN, a nonprofit group that's dedicated to following the e-waste trade around the world. BAN installs secret GPS trackers and electronics and then drops them off at recyclers to see where they end up. Jim Puckett is the founder and director of BAN. In the late 1980s, way back when, um, there was a rash, an epidemic of people exporting their hazardous waste to developing countries rather than properly managing it at home because it was difficult, poisonous stuff, right? So people said, well, we'll just use the ships out there and free trade and go ahead and export it. Americans throw out millions of tons of electronics every year, and export abroad is still a big problem. Take, for instance, LCD monitors that contain mercury. If a worker in, say, Hong Kong smashes it, poisonous vapor can be released into the air. Workers dismantling electronics can get severely sick and even die. A 1989 treaty called the Basel Convention does regulate the export of e-waste, but the U.S. has never ratified it. And a provision that would stop countries from sending e-waste to many developing nations isn't in effect. The U.S. has been remiss for many years now, for about 20-some years, particularly environmental treaties. So there's very little stopping American recyclers from dumping their electronics abroad until BAN gets involved. And so the tracker will go here. This board will end up going right about there. So it still looks like a normal piece of electronic. Without federal e-waste laws, BAN's tracking system is one of the only ways for businesses and governments to find out who they want to work with. After we bugged this monitor, we made plans to drop it at a local recycler. Uh, this is the loading dock where you will be walking up to and delivering it. What do you say when you walk up to the counter? We have uh, something to deliver for you guys. Here's an old monitor, just like act like a customer, and you're, and that's it. This recycler, which we're not naming, has been caught exporting waste in the past, and Ban wants to check up on them. Hi. Yeah, it's dropping it off for recycling. Yeah, you like a receipt? Uh, yes, please. Please have an email right up here. Okay. It's that easy. It was incredibly easy. Yeah. What email address did you put in? Uh, it was my personal email address. Okay. Not my work email address. <laughs> I was going to say. Afterwards, Ban sent me up with their in-house software called EarthEye so I could follow the monitor's trail. As we were working on this video, I could see it had traveled miles outside of Seattle to an e-waste processing facility. Using EarthEye, Ban has tracked the spread of e-waste all over the planet. We have two trackers here, one that ended up in Hong Kong and one that ended up in Thailand. As we zoom in, it just looks like a farmland. But keep zooming in. And you see all this trash right here. This black part is, I believe, from the sludge from actually um, burning and handling this material. Again, exporting electronics is not against the law in the U.S., but with the help of investigators, BAN has still managed to send some unethical recyclers to prison. Wow, the total reclaim story goes way back. In 2002, BAN produced a documentary about e-waste exported to China, and they interviewed recyclers about their practices. And the only one that would talk to us was Craig Lorch of Total Reclaim. And we put him in our film as being a good guy that was concerned about the export, that he still had to do some exporting, but he did, didn't like to do it. 
The local Seattle recycler, Total Reclaim, eventually signed on to ban certification program, meaning they pledged to recycle ethically. So he became, over the years, our poster child of the good recycler. Lorch even appeared in the ban documentary complaining about unprincipled recyclers. You're charging on the front side, you're selling the material on the back side offshore. You don't do any work in between, you just arrange to have the material loaded into a shipping container and shipped. It's all about the money. But in 2015, while working on a tracking report, Ban noticed waste flowing from Oregon to Total Reclaim in Washington. It made its way to Seattle's industrial Harbor Island, only about three miles from Ban's office. We're just really so close, it's amazing. Then, the tracker crossed the Pacific to Hong Kong. And we were shocked. We were just like, whoa, these things do not lie. What's going on with Total Reclaim, our poster child of the good guys? Ban's report drew the attention of state and federal investigators. As Assistant U.S. Attorney Seth Wilkinson explains, Total Reclaim broke the law by lying to their customers. In this case, we don't have a federal law that specifically prohibits sending things overseas, sending this material overseas. What we do have is federal laws that makes it illegal to commit fraud, to make material misrepresentations about something in order to get money. And the more digging investigators did, the more fabrications that turned up. Total Reclaim initially said, oh, there must be some mistake. We don't send flat screen uh, monitors to Asia. Um, and they said, what we do do is we send plastic to Asia. And they said, what must have happened is that one of the GPS devices must have fallen out of a monitor, fallen into a bin of plastic, and been transported over to Asia. And to back that false narrative up, they created a bunch of false documents. Puckett traveled to Hong Kong, where he found Total Reclaim's discarded LCD monitors and workers who could have been poisoned by them. Eventually, Total Reclaim fessed up, and the founders were ultimately charged with fraud. The defendants are charged with one count of conspiracy in violation of Title 18 United States Code, Section 371. The founders agreed to a plea deal and were each sentenced to 28 months in prison. So ban system worked, although for Puckett, it hardly felt like a relief. Probably one of the most troubling things I've experienced in this business of being an advocate was getting a real ally and then find out that you're betrayed by that ally. It can be hard to picture just how much of this stuff recyclers have to deal with. So we visited a local business called Friendly Earth, which says it's trying to handle the work responsibly, like Total Reclaim was supposed to. This is what it looks like when you first get this it. This is, then. yeah, this is a, looks a, like a, a, mess. <laughs> a pretty good example of it. Um, you're gonna see a mix of, you know, circuit, loose circuit boards, uh, plenty of wire, plenty of cabling, uh, maybe a, Maybe a desktop or two. This one looks like it's seen better days. The company takes in thousands of pounds of electronics a day from around Washington. It refurbishes what it can and sends the rest to other companies to be broken down further. We are small in comparison to a lot of the recyclers out there that have uh, shredders or you know, um, fleet of 20 to 30 trucks, um, or maybe seven to 10, 12, 15 locations across the world. We, we're growing, but we're growing organically, um, and we're doing it, uh, you know, the right way. For a lot of Americans, the effects of e-waste can seem so far away that they're hard to grasp. But the way our electronics are recycled matters. Federal legislation to reform e-waste exporting has been on the table for years, but keeps slipping away. Meanwhile, the damage that's happening is real. Pollution, it does harm people. Nobody quantifies it, and it's really hard to quantify how many deaths or disease. But it is a form of murder. Um, when people die from this, and they'll die pre prematurely, the data supports the fact that these pollutants do cause death and disease. By contrast, proper recycling is more expensive, but it is doable. So by the numbers, none of this really had to happen. Each of the owners of Total Reclaim uh, took home almost $8 million in income over the period that this was going on. It would have cost about $2.5 million um, for them to do this properly. So perhaps instead of each of them making eight, they would have made $6.5 each. 